Hi there and welcome to another Car Cleaning Guru video. Here I'll attempt to demonstrate the correct procedure for safely cleaning, polishing and protecting painted alloy wheels using the heavily soiled examples on this second generation Mercedes B200. The first stage of cleaning any sufficiently dirty wheel for me, whether painted or unpainted, is to liberally apply a traffic film remover or TFR via a pump spray to all areas of the wheel, brake caliper and arch in order to soften the initial layer of road grime and brake dust prior to pre-rinsing. After being left to dwell for a minute or two, the TFR was then thoroughly rinsed off at pressure to remove as much dirt and contamination from the painted surface as possible before any direct contact cleaning or washing was undertaken. With the wheel having been thoroughly pre-rinsed, I went on to apply my trade-based wheel cleaner of choice, NEAT, via a foaming trigger spray head which helps the product cling to the surface. Spraying into the rear or barrel of the wheel first, before moving on to the brake caliper and wheel face, as well as the tyre wall. then leaving to dwell for a few moments before working it in. Attacking the rear first, I used my trusty easy detail brush to which I applied some more cleaner to give it some extra bite. Now usually I'd advise loading your brush with suds first to act as lubrication over the painted surface, but because the rears of these wheels had never been cleaned before, I opted to use the brush dry so to speak. Beginning at the top and methodically moving down and around, I worked the thick brush into the recesses of the rim, turning and twisting it as I went to ensure all areas were reached. Like most decent wheel brushes, the Easy Detail brush can be bent to allow you to access the rears of the spokes for example, an easily overlooked area of the wheel, as well as allowing you to effectively wrap it around the brake caliper without having to remove the wheel. Now that the rear areas of the wheel had been sufficiently agitated, it was time to work the cleaner into the front facing surfaces using a standard soft bristle detailing brush dipped in shampoo solution. 
I started at the centre of the wheel, twisting the brush into the lug nut areas and branded centre cap, before reloading it with soap and working all areas of the spokes and rim. The final area to agitate was the front of the brake caliper which was clearly visible on this car and required a second flat brush to access the area hidden behind the spoke, but you could of course simply move the car forward or backward a little instead if you so wished. Most wheel cleaning products are designed to then be rinsed right off but I like to wash the wheels using a standard shampoo solution as I think it helps to neutralise the wheel cleaning product residue prior to rinsing, not to mention give a more thorough overall clean. Here I used a synthetic wash mitt reserved only for the wheels alongside a single bucket and grip guard filled with a good quality Carnauba based shampoo product. This time starting with the outer faces of the wheel, working methodically following the shape and contours of the spokes and wheel design. Reloading the wash mitt with fresh shampoo solution before moving on to the centre of the wheel. The rears of the spokes as we mentioned earlier. And if like myself you have usefully long skinny arms and the wheel design permits you can gently work them bit into the barrel of the wheel to spread some shampoo around. Although if you don't fancy scraping your arms across the rusty edge of the brake disc something like a wheel woolly would be perfect for shampooing behind. Once all wheel surfaces had been washed, the tyre wall was given a good going over with the mitt as were the inner areas of the wheel arch. No extra cleaning product was applied here though as the majority of the dirt had already been removed with the traffic film remover earlier. You can use an appropriate brush for tyre and arch cleaning if you prefer but wherever possible I like to get stuck in and wash away any dirt by hand. Final thorough rinse was then undertaken to ensure all dirt and product residues were thoroughly removed, remembering not to overlook the rears and finishing with the wheel arches, giving the surrounding bodywork a brief blast to make sure no product overspray is left sitting on the paintwork. This is the point at which when cleaning an entire vehicle you would move on to washing the bodywork while the wheels were still wet but for this demonstration we'll assume that's already been undertaken and move straight on to the drying of the wheels. I went with a clean dry microfiber towel again reserved only for the wheels and much like the washing worked methodically lightly drying the painted wheel surfaces using only light fingertip pressure.
After the painted parts of the wheel had been dried off, the tyre wall and inner arch were also dried to provide a suitably adherent surface for dressing products to later be applied. before a quick tea break prior to polishing and protecting. As the wheels went oxidised or overly swirled, I chose to go with an all-in-one polished product which contains light abrasives, paint cleaners and a synthetic sealant applied with an old but clean microfiber pad, first dabbed over the entire surface of the wheel before being evenly spread and thoroughly worked in with my fingertips applying moderate pressure. The diamond cut surfaces were clear coated and so could be polished using the same product. Finishing up with the centre cap and lug nut areas which were simply accessed using my finger. before allowing the product to fully dry to a haze which took a little longer than normal here due to the damp winter air. A fresh dry microfiber towel was used to steadily buff off the cloudy polish residue from the surface of the wheel to reveal a deep dark glossy finish which contrasted nicely with the brighter diamond cut spoke faces and rim. Some time should be spent buffing to ensure all potentially unsightly product residue is fully removed from all recesses of the wheel face prior to sealing.
Despite the polished product containing a sealant, in order to achieve the best possible durability, I went on to apply a separate wheel protectant product in the form of Poor Boy's wheel sealant. It was applied in a similar fashion to the polish, only now a foam applicator pad was used instead of a microfiber one, and only fingertip pressure was used. It was lightly spread over the surface with the bright pink colour of the product clearly contrasting with the dark colour of the wheel, helping to show which areas had already been covered. before being left to dry to a haze and fully cure prior to buffing. A fresh new microfiber towel was then used to remove the sealant, buffing my way methodically around the wheel face. Particular attention was paid to the centre of the wheel, with the plastic handle of a small detailing brush being wrapped in the towel to remove any excess sealant residue from inside the lug nut recesses. Once the wheel sealant had been thoroughly buffed off it was time to dress both the tyre and arch liner to complete the look of the freshly detailed wheel. The tyre was up first and was dressed with a durable non-silicon exterior dressing applied with a microfiber applicator pad reserved only for dressing tyres. It was liberally sprayed onto the pad and not the tyre wall itself to avoid product overspray and thoroughly worked into the moulded texture of the tyre wall working to about half an inch over the edge of the tyre tread pattern. The same product was then carefully sprayed into the wheel arch area before being worked in with yet another microfiber towel until the desired finish was achieved. Arch liners are fairly easy to overlook but really do help to finish off the overall look of a freshly detailed car when properly dressed and so it's worth trying to remember to tackle them. Once the dressing was completed, the final step was to give the wheel a light mist and buff over with a last touch detail spray just to lift off any remaining product overspray or residue, as well as give the painted surface a last bit of pop for the aftershots. As always, comments and constructive criticism are welcome. I'll be back with another video in the new year. In the meantime, a very Merry Christmas, thanks for watching in 2014 and enjoy the aftershots.